Who is Giselle? The real Giselle? The Giselle we don't know. Welcome back to Idol Deep Dive, the show where we take a closer look at the stories behind our favorite idols and figure out what we can learn from them. Today, we're diving into the mind of Giselle, which has been a bit tricky for me. Cause a look at any behind the scenes media of this girl and you'll recognize just how down to earth she is. Which to me is a bit unexpected, as her life has been far from down to earth. Not only has she been part of, oh, you know, unarguably one of the biggest K-pop girl groups for a few years now, but she's served as a fashion ambassador, performed at Coachella, and probably met some world leaders and gone to space, who knows at this point. But despite her meteoric rise to popularity, which happened practically overnight, she has a demeanor that stays chill and honest. She's had one of the shortest trainee periods in the industry, but she's climbed to the top of the K-pop ladder with surprising ease. So I was more excited than ever to uncover what got her there. And what I found out was fascinating. So Mize, let's take a deep dive into the world of Uchinaga Eri. Which means it's time to go, you know it, back to the beginning. Giselle, or should I say Eri, was born on October 30th, 2000, in the Gangnam district of Seoul, South Korea, but shortly after moved to Tokyo. Her mother was a Korean fashion designer, and her father was a Japanese… we don't know. But we do know that she spoke both languages at home, and that she credits her mom as the source of her interest in fashion. Eri had always wanted to be a singer since she was young, but that wasn't her only dream job. When I was young, I also wanted to become an actress. I loved watching movies and TV shows and Disney Channel, and Angelina Jolie was everything to me. I remember wanting to be Alex Rousseau or Lara Croft growing up. I also did a lot of acting in and out of school by taking roles in musicals and plays. So seeing as her drama teaser was the only one with lines in it, maybe we can see some acting roles in the future. Anyways, she went to Tokyo International School, where, you guessed it, she learned and spoke English regularly. Like most idols, music had always been a source of inspiration in Giselle's life. She was part of competitive choir, dreamt of going to Coachella, <laughs> funny thing, and loved R&B and rock, some of her favorite artists being Ariana Grande, Stevie Wonder, and Blink-182, which is about as far from K-pop as you can get. In fact, she only got into K-pop in high school. Then she started getting the appeal. She told W Magazine, I realized it really does have a lot of impact around the world, and it gives a lot of good energy. It also helped me through the tough times. I wanted to be that for someone else. And I want you to remember that line. It's going to be important to understanding how Giselle views her own career. But we'll get back to that later. We hear more about those first few sparks on YouTube's Artist on the Rise. 어느 날 뭔가 한 노래를 듣고 막 필이 왔나 봐. 그래서 내가 갖고 있는 공책 노트북에다가 썼어. 다른 건 몰라도 너는 커서 가수가 될 거다. 나도 저렇게 다른 사람들한테 좋은 영향을 끼쳐야 되겠다라고 생각을 했어. This action really struck me as impactful. Giselle basically just decided then and there she would be a singer. And boy, did she act on it. She graduated, left her most iconic quote of all time in the yearbook. No. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> and headed straight on over to Korea. <laughs> like literally straight on over to begin auditioning. That's chasing your dreams to the next level. All the other members of ESPA were contacted by SM. But SM was contacted by Giselle. Now bear with me here. Let's play that out. You know, that fateful day at SM Saturday auditions, which, by the way, only seven idols had ever been chosen from. Let's pretend you're Lee Suman. It's 2019, and the entire concept for ESPA has been planned out. We have three promising trainees already, and all we need is someone to bring it all together. Let's take a look at Eri's resume. Okay, three languages? That's helpful. Saying in choir? Good, good. Dance experience? No, that's okay, we can teach you. Oh, you can rap. Let's see what you got. Uh, hard rock scout, head shit pot, no talk, got the gun, a suki in the sand, jumping town, so kind of dust like a box. Hey. All right, viewer, what do you think? Should we send her to the next round? Well, those who voted yes, I guess you're not Lee Suman because she didn't get in. So she came back. Hey. You get off my cloud. You don't know me and you don't know my style. She didn't get in. 
So she came back. She didn't get him. So she came back. All right, all right, we'll take you, we'll take you. Yep, she auditioned four times before she got in. And this is where Giselle's strength really lies. When she puts her mind to something, she really chases it with all her being. She says her mindset was literally just continue going ahead. Her willpower is off the charts. But she didn't know how to dance. And going from that to debut in only 11 months was, well, 그래서 진짜 아침부터 새벽까지 매일 매일 몸 움직이면서 근데 그때는 생각도 잘안 돌아가잖아 막 oh, 힘들고 그치. 하니까. And that was a lot of stress. Truthfully, Giselle felt outclassed. And then I saw their like videos and I'm like, <laughs> oh wow, like I don't think like wow, you know? What'd you think? I, they were so good. Like they were very good. She knew she was playing catch up. Tirelessly, day in and day out, she had to train. There was no other choice. But the strong bonds she developed with her members helped bring her through it. She was finally revealed for the lineup on her birthday, October 30th. Hey Suman, just because you revealed her on her birthday doesn't mean it counts as a present, okay? It's just a coincidence. You still have to get her something. Capiche? Don't... don't look at me like that. Oh, and as to why she's named Giselle, and now you know. Now, every member of ESPA had to deal with the COVID pandemic and the novel concept of the group. So if you want to hear more about that, just check out my Karina deep dive. Instead, I would like to focus on how Giselle has managed to stay true to herself while living a life completely unlike anything she had been a part of before. First, dealing with negativity. Becoming famous just means a lot of people know about you. Hopefully, most of what they say is good, but every celebrity will inevitably face negativity and hate at one point or another. In fact, when you're on top of the ladder, it happens every day. Upon debut, it really did bother Giselle, but she said, At the start, like during debut and those times, like I would like look at, you know, all of that, but people around me like would be like, why why do you look at that like nothing's gonna change anyways like you already know what you have to work on and what you're good at so that kind of hit me and i was like that's true like what's the point it's, it's such a waste of time not you know talking bad on those people but just saying that for me it's a waste of time you know when i could be using that time to improve myself some critiques are valid but some aren't helpful giselle has gotten better at learning when it's time to listen and when she can focus on herself by doing that she's able to you know, not go insane. Second, creative time. What surprised me was how many creative hobbies Giselle still has, despite her harsh schedule. I mean, she struggles with insomnia and has directly said there isn't enough hours in the day. Yet she keeps a book for transcribing poems, which she busted out in a tea house in one of her vlogs. She regularly writes lyrics and also consciously tries to express her mood every day with what she wears, like the fashionista she is. It really makes me wonder, when activities in ESPA slow down a bit later, if she'll use the newfound time to make music, or something like that. It'd be cool to see what she whips up. Finally, and maybe most importantly to staying true to herself, is her emphasis on vibes. More specifically, her awareness of the feelings she brings to the group and Mai's. Listen to this. <laughs> Giselle, put simply, is living in a strange world. She's followed her dreams and has reaped the rewards. But as a huge fan of music herself, she inevitably reflects on herself as an artist. What am I, now that I'm where I want to be, bringing to the table? And she really does care about this. Things from the excitement of doing her first rock song because it'll have a freeing vibe. <laughs> 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 
to giving viewers a chance to listen to the background ambience in her vlogs. Heck, she has an entire series with Karina where they just hunt for the Balkan slash Middle Eastern dish Kaimak, and apparently other foods now, and vibe at the table together. <laughs> it's this groundedness, this awareness over time of who she's become, that strikes me about Giselle. Even after all her hard work, she emanates the feeling, or should I say vibe, of a friend that just wants to give us a closer view of Espa. Whether it's being the glue of the team in every English interview. We're here at the Zach Sang show and we talked about our new album Girls. Or dropping spoilers like they're hot. I guess what I'm trying to say is, it feels good to have a friend in the business. As always, thanks for watching guys. I just want to give a shout out to everyone leaving comments requesting idols. In fact, part of the reason I chose Giselle was because I saw a comment saying she was underappreciated. I know I've been focusing on a few groups, but I think it'll be time to dip our toes into unfamiliar territory very soon. Alright, see you guys next time. Annyeong!